Well, when it comes to vocal mixing, I tend to keep it simple and focus on the big three, you know, EQ, compression and reverb. But there's also some other things that you can do to take vocals to the next level in a live stream mix. So why don't you tell us a bit about your favorites before we finish up here? Sure. Um, yeah. 95 percent is EQ, compression and reverb. And that's probably a conservative estimate. Like, get those three, and honestly, you don't need anything else. Like, you really don't need anything else at all. Uh, master those three, and you'll have a great, great vocal mix. Some other things, most of the other things are really, like, specific problem solvers that I would use or just additional effects. I'm not going to talk about additional effects because if you want a distorted vocal, you know to add a distortion. I don't need to tell you that. Um, but some problem solvers that might come into play is, like, a de uh, which is just... It pick, it's basically a compressor of a high frequency where the sibilance is. So like it might compress the 5K when it comes in, but nothing else. It's in a way like a very specific multiband compressor is what it is. Um, and that's just to get rid of um, very harsh sibilance, which I actually have a problem with. So I have, I had a lot of DSing on my album because I, I do this a lot. I don't know why, but that's what it sounds like when I'm singing. He's going to hear that. So that's what de is. It gets to that S, 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 S that with it gets really ugly. Um, you might need that. You might not on a live stream. Only use it if you need it. Um, it can also cause delay issues because some of them, since they're multiband compressors, technically I use a lot of processing power. So be careful that it doesn't delay your vocals. Uh, another one, saturation. Some people love saturation. I'm not a big saturation head. If that's a word, I'm coining it right now, saturation heads. Um, saturation is just a fancy word for distortion that you can't really hear. Um, and what it does is like all distortions, it introduces a bunch of extra energy and harmonics and frequencies into your sound. But the point of saturation opposed to distortion is that it's low enough that you can't really tell. And in a recording studio situation, it might have some good uses. In a live stream, it's probably too broad of a mix for that to matter, if that makes sense. The only time I might say to use it in a live stream is if, on vocals, um, is if you tried everything and you really can't get that lead vocal to cut through the mix, you could try to throw some saturation on there. It might help it cut through. It might make it distorted, so you have to be careful. But that is one area it could maybe help is to help the lead vocal cut through. This video is brought to you by X32 Mastery, the fastest way to master both the X32 and the M32. Get access today for you and your team at x32.church. Another one that I see that's common is delay. And a lot of people add delay to vocals. And what you're doing with delay on vocals is you're just adding really, really long reverb, basically. Delay is actually reverb is a kind of delay. But in this case, delay is a kind of reverb. So you're just trying to get another reverb effect. And if you know what you're doing with delay, it can sound really good and natural, but only use delay as a reverb if you know what you're doing. I was just, I went to a church and they had a delay on the vocal and while they were playing, I couldn't tell and it sounded great, but then like the band stopped and it got quiet and they had this like fourth note ping pong delay on and all of a sudden it's like a, fish concert because the band slowed down and there's like the lead singers like echoing all over the place because they have this like fourth note delay on it so it can sound great and it's like you use like fourth note and eighth note delays and you're replicating like sound bouncing off walls like a really big reverb and it can add a lot of lushness because it basically adds another voice in there that you can't tell is there but again if you don't control it like well and you don't watch it and like your band slows down it gets to a quiet part you might end up with like a weird fish concert echoey delay thing going on when you don't want it so use delay if you really want to play with it and be careful and knob watch the whole time and you like the sound of it go for it but if you want to set it and forget it and you don't want to mess with that then be careful with delay i would say yeah i agree i I tend to stay away from delay and tell my sound techs at our church not to use it because you you have to babysit it. You do, <laughs> if you yeah, don't babysit yeah. it, you're going to have some funny things going on at the end yes, of your song. You are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it does sound really cool whenever you know what you're doing and you're yeah. babysitting it. And yeah, yeah, that's some of the coolest moments in a mix. It's like you hear that delay because it's like right at the right time and they had a program just right. You're like, wow, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. But I don't tend to get to be that awesome because, you know, at church, there's so many other things you got to think of other than babysitting yeah. the delay. So, 
Yeah, and like on my when I'm recording in the studio, I have reverb and delay on every track, but I have the delay automated so that when the song cuts out, so does delay, so it's not weird. You can't really automate your live stream audio the way you can a recording studio, so you got to literally knob watch. Yep. All right, man. Well, if you want to hear Nathan's master mixing skills on a recording, you have to go listen to his album. So, man, tell us a little more about that album and how we can hear it. Yeah, uh, it's called Hymns of the Father. Um, it's the first part of a three-part series in the Trinity Project. First one's the Father. I bet you can guess the other two, Spirit and Son. I don't know why I said that. Usually Son and Spirit. Um, but you can you can find it on all the places you find music, Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube and all those places, or www.reawakenhymns.com. You can also go there, and then you can also get a devotional and an audiobook and backing tracks and all the worship resources if you want to use those in your church, because... The point of me making this stuff is not just so I get to make music. That's just a great benefit of it. Um, but I'm trying to equip the church with this stuff. Like, I know a lot of churches want to play hymns, and sometimes you can't find the right version that fits with your, you know, you play an elevation song and then you pull out the organ. That doesn't work so much. So, with this album in particular, I tried to make them very modern sounding, like they would fit right next to any Australian mega church song that you happen to be playing in your set. Um, so that's that's what this is for. It's really I'm just trying to provide these hymns to fit in the context of the modern churches, so we don't lose them because they're awesome. So yeah, you can get on my website or listen to it wherever Spotify. Um, just search "Hymns of the Father" or "Reawaken Hymns" and you'll find it. That's awesome, man. My hat's off to you because that was a big project that you. I guess you're still in the middle of. Uh, yeah, and I think it, a lot of churches are going to benefit from this. So I just pray, man, that the your album gets out to everybody who needs it, that it becomes really well known so that churches have those resources available. Cause how cool that you can get the backing tracks and the devotionals and, and everything. Cause I can just see worship teams using those devotionals to, you know, have that together. So they know what they're singing about and it just brings more, more purpose to what they're doing. Cause as a worship team, you come, sometimes you show up, you just go through, you know, what it takes to put the song together and you don't really think about what you're singing. I can just see your devotionals really, helping that so dude yeah, great job would, thank you thank you that would be that would be great that'd be great yeah, <laughs> that's man. what i'm going for <laughs> that's awesome man well thanks for your time today it was great y'all go thank check out is. his album 